My topic for this presentation was the Groningen Meander walking test. What is dementia? Dementia is an overall term associated with a decline in memory or other thinking skills severe enough to reduce a person's everyday activities. It is caused by damage to brain cells. Dementia is often incorrectly referred to as senility or senile dementia which reflects the formerly widespread but incorrect belief that serious mental decline is a normal part of aging. Some symptoms of dementia include impairment in memory, communication and language, ability to focus and pay attention, reasoning and judgment, and visual perception. How is dementia and dynamic walking and balance tests related to PTA practice? Since dementia leads to loss of cognitive and physical functions, patients will have a decrease in physical activity which leads to an increased risk of falling. Compared with older, healthier adults, their peers with dementia are 2-3 to three more likely to fall. Recent reviews show that studies in people with dementia only used walking and balance tests such as the functional reach test and the figure of 8. The functional reach test did not involve any walking, so the relevance for dynamic walking is minor. The figure of 8 is a reliable test, however, it relies too much on healthy cognitive functioning and memory to execute the test. A test for people with dementia should provide an obvious, unambiguous test assignment and short test instructions with a maximum of 3-step command because queuing during a test negatively affects the test results. Test durations should also be short to avoid fatigue. Therefore, a more feasible, reliable, sensitive, and valid test to assess abilities was needed. In order to provide such a test, the Groningen Meander walking test was developed specifically for people diagnosed with dementia and it is compared with other current dynamic walking tests that rely strongly on cognitive and physical function. The Groningen Meander walking test was aimed to measure walking abilities by walking over a meandering curved line with emphasis on walking speed and stepping accuracy while changing directions. The Groningen Meander walking test was designed to maximize feasibility which meant more intuitive tasks, short distance, no crossover of the track, and few instructions needed. This is just a visual representation of what the tests look like. The thick curved line in the middle is the path that the participants took. Now on to the study. The aim of the study was to investigate feasibility and test retest reliability, which means giving the same test twice to the same people at different times to see if scores are the same. Participants were instructed to walk as fast and accurately as possible. They were instructed to walk over the path as fast and accurately as possible and try not to step outside the lines. No practice trials were included and a walking device was allowed. The first outcome measure was time to perform the test. Participants were timed between the back and forth walk. A faster time indicated a better performance. The second outcome measure was the number of other steps taken completely outside of the, the track. Steps outside the track were noted again from going back and forth and the final score was the mean of those oversteps. Smaller number indicated a better score. A pre-test T0, post-test T1 repeated measures designed for the Groningen Meander walking test time and overstep scores was used to investigate the feasibility test retest reliability. The adherence rate of the Groningen Meander walking test for T0 and T1 was assessed as an indicator of feasibility. In addition, reasons for non-participation, not completing the test, adverse events, repetition of the instructions during test performance, test duration, and number of oversteps were noted. Repeated measures were administered by same well-trained experienced test instructors with one week between tests at the same time and at the same location at an illuminated closed-off corridor and specialized nursing homes. 
All test instructors were trained by primary researcher who gave written and oral instructions of how to perform and assess the test according to test protocol. A total of 42 participants were recruited from four specialized nursing homes in or around Groningen, Netherlands. Participants had to meet this criteria. They had to be 70 years of age, Dutch native speakers, diagnosed with dementia by psychiatrist or medical doctor, their mini mental status examination score or MMSE had to be in the range of 9 to 24 and I will include a link in the email so that you guys can see what that looks like and they had to be able to walk independently with or without a walking device but without personal assistance. Women made up 78.6% of participants so 33 out of 42 and the age range for this study was 75 to 99. The results support an excellent feasibility as all participants were able to perform the test without any hesitation or any adverse effects. At cognitive level, an obvious unambiguous test assignment with simple and short instructions was provided. At physical level, fatigue was avoided by providing a short test duration. The Groningen Meander walking test required less time to complete compared to the figure of 8. It required 5.8 to 37.7 seconds to complete compared to the figure of 8 which required 18.2 to 117.2 seconds to complete. Also, participants made fewer oversteps compared to the FOE test. Test retest reliability. The test was reliable, however, combining test results showed that walking with a device leads to an underestimation of reliability in relation to time. For the overstep scores, both people with or without walkers showed marginal test retest reliability. That was because participants who had difficulty staying between the lines walked more slowly, which affected the time but improved the overstep scores. Overall, the sample size was good, however, it had geographical limitations. No information regarding fall history was included, so the Groningen Meander walking test cannot be used as an indicator to fall risk, and recruitment of participants was based on the inclusion criteria and willingness to participate, which led to a volunteer bias.